In this video, I'll quickly explain how to control a multi channel DMX controlled laser with the open source software QLC Plus and how to create a fixture file describing the laser's capabilities. Although, you should be able to pick up all the details necessary by pausing the video. If you find some parts of this video too fast, watch my first video on DMX and MIDI First, which covers all the basics. <laughs> Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's talk about hardware sequencers and lasers. This video was sponsored by Sheds, a manufacturer of stage lights. And if you think that's an interesting topic, please join me in this video. Here we go. This video is sponsored by Sheds, who asked me to choose one product from their webpage and then sent me this stage laser here. Better said, there are six lasers in a 3x2 color configuration here, placed on an axis that can be rotated by 190 degrees. Each of the lasers can be rotated by 90 degrees individually. The whole unit is moving with electromotors. The parcel arrived within a few days, and while I don't know anything about stage lighting, I can say the overall quality here is superb. Everything's built from metal, nothing is wobbling, and all the parts can be exchanged easily, which was crucial for making this video because one of the lasers had been damaged in transport and I will send a replacement laser and installing that wasn't complicated. It was a matter of unscrewing some lids. On the back of the device, you'll find the power switch and the DMX interface, which is used for remotely controlling this laser. On the front side, there are some buttons and an LCD which will let you set up the device number and other parameters. Turning on the laser without a DMX controller attached to it will make it go into demonstration mode, which looks quite impressive and made up cat show some unexpected dance moves. For people intending to use this device as a glow up for the party dance floor, there's auto mode, which will let the laser react to the music it's picking up. The sensitivity of this feature can be adjusted in the menu, and it's reacting to tremors mostly, so in order to show it off, I can hit the table or use one of my Bluetooth speakers that use the table as a sound box. Here's how that looks, and I really wish I had a fog machine here for better effect. Shads also provides a short manual that you shouldn't throw away, as it contains the DMX channel descriptions you'll need for setting up your DMX controller. This device can be used in an 11, 19 or 24 channel setup, allowing for both a broader or more intricate approach to setting up your light show. Right, now let's get this to work with a setup using QLC, an open source DMX controller software. Its creator Massimo Caligari reached out to me and told me I should look into creating a fixture definition file first, so let's do that. Luckily, QLC comes with a fixture definition editor, so boot that up and now press the plus icon and fill in the form. Here we have a laser by Shades. On the physical tab, you can specify the size, weight and other technical specs of your device, which will be helpful for controlling and organizing bigger setups. Next, let's set up the channels. Here, the manual comes in handy. Press the plus icon and then add all the features from the list in the manual, line by line. Most of those should be in the default list already, and if they aren't, just create a custom entry. Once that's done, go to the Modes tab and add a new mode. Now assign all the functions to it in their order of appearance in the manual, one by one. As you see, they'll automatically be assigned a channel. And once that's done, save your fixture description, we can now start working with QLC+. For the following examples, I'm using a cheap USB to DMX cable and an Intec grid MIDI controller. Links are in this video's description. In the first example, I'm going to control the lasers directly with my MIDI device in QLC Plus on the start screen 
add a fixture and then load the fixture file you've created previously. Then press the Functions tab at the bottom of the screen. Now add a new scene by pressing the colored square icon in the top left corner. Name your scene and add your fixture to it by pressing the plus icon on the left. Then press the Inputs Outputs tab and make sure your DMX cable is selected as an output and the MIDI controller is an active input. Then go to the virtual console screen and add a fader. Double click it and check Catch Up in the middle of the screen. Then click Auto Detect and move a control on your MIDI device. It will be detected automatically. Now switch to the Level tab and select the function of your DMX device you want to control, in this case the overall tilt. Check Update Slider Level in the bottom of the screen and once again click Auto Detect and move your MIDI control, then click OK. Then press the Play button in the top right corner of the screen and move your MIDI control, which should move the slider on the screen. Now add another slider in much the same way as before, but this time we'll use a different MIDI control and assign it to panning the first laser. Now we can move one of the lasers horizontally and vertically with a MIDI controller. Nice. Let's take a look at creating simple sequences in QLC Plus now. In the most basic form, these are called chasers. A chaser can play back any given number of scenes in defined intervals. On the Functions tab, start by creating a scene and add your fixture to it. I also label the scene correctly, so at a later point I can understand what's happening. Then, click the tab that has your laser's name on it and adjust all the settings as needed. Here, I'm making it so that the red lasers are pointing left. Then, add another scene and adjust as needed. In this example, I'm making the red lasers point right and the blue lasers as well, but they're not switched on yet. In the next scene, I'm switching on the blue lasers and turn off the red lasers. And in the final scene, the blue lasers are pointing left again. Now, click the new chaser icon, which is right of the new scene icon, or use the context menu to do so. Press the plus button in the top right of the screen and add your scenes in the correct order. You can specify their length in the list and here it shows 1000 milliseconds or 1 second. Press play and your laser should now play the sequence as specified. Nice. The last thing I'll try here is to use a hardware MIDI sequencer to record the laser's movements. Here I'm using the Intec Grid controller, which is connected to a USB to 5-pin MIDI hub. This goes into the RetroKids RK008 sequencer and from there into the RK006 MIDI interface, which is connected to QLC Plus and the DMX interface. My QLC setup looks like this, three faders that control pitch and the angle of both red and blue lasers. The RK08 will capture the controller movements and play them back. First I'll set the pattern length to 16 measures and now I can just press record and play and start moving the controllers. <laughs>
and that's it for today. DMX, QLC, and lasers. Thanks again to Sheds for sponsoring this video and providing the laser. And if you think this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.